probably the most important message of the new guidelines for, for primary care providers that are still getting accustomed to SGLT2 inhibitors. People remember that they were initially developed for treatment of diabetes. And where we are now is that they are so beneficial to the kidneys that we recommend uh, using an SGLT2 inhibitor for anyone with diabetes and chronic kidney disease. So that means diabetes and an EGFR less than 60, and especially diabetes with albuminuria greater than 30. Our primary care pr providers may also remember that these agents are useful for heart failure. And at this point, we're using them uh, for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction or preserved ejection fraction. That might seem like a left field topic for chronic kidney disease, but chronic kidney disease is probably the number one risk factor for heart failure. And so these agents lower the risk for developing heart failure and they help reduce complications of heart failure. Now the part that's most new. For patients without diabetes, and they have chronic kidney disease, albuminuria determines the importance of the SGLT2 inhibitor. Our community has not been in the practice of measuring albuminuria in these patients, but it's especially important with the use of SGLT2 inhibitors. We now know that for those patients who have severe albuminuria, and that's over 300, the benefits of the SGLT2 inhibitors are extraordinary. The reduction in risk of progression to kidney failure is on the order of a 35% relative risk. It's almost twice as helpful as ACE inhibitors, which most primary care providers think of as the best kidney drug. Now, if the albuminuria is 30 to 300, there's still benefit from the SGLT2 inhibitors. Not quite as extraordinary where it's a mandatory use, but we suggest that they be used. And if the urine albumin is normal, then there's no compelling indication to use the SGLT2 inhibitors unless the patient also has heart failure.